Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I feel like I've been the world's worst YouTuber in terms of uploading like never but if you have been following along with my journey I've recently relocated to Perth WA which has wreaked all sorts of havoc in terms of life being normal. We are definitely kind of out the other side in terms of just the manicness that was getting married, growing on honeymoon and immigrating all in one fell swoop. So I'm so excited to be back to my YouTube channel and to be creating content that I absolutely love. This video is going to be sort of on the same vein, which is cons of moving to WA. It might seem strange to make a video like this, but I have been really enjoying the videos online that I've seen of people like Kat and there was another one by Sundays with Jamie I think her name is and I just found so much sort of like commiseration in terms of some of their points because I feel like even though the points can be quite similar across the videos because people share such like personal anecdotes in terms of why they feel that way it really makes for a rich listening or watching experience because you can really get a sense of what people's experience has been either moving to WA for the first time, in Kat's case, or Sunday with Jamie, she grew up in Perth and then she moves back. So it's quite fun to kind of hear how other people have gotten on. And I wanted to share a little bit with you guys, even if you're not interested in moving to Perth in terms of the trials and tribulations that is immigration. So if you're new here, it's so good to have you. My name is Megs. Every week, normally I release digital marketing videos, but of late I have been absolutely awful and definitely veering off script. I've covered a lot more about my back surgery that I had last year. And there's actually a few honeymoon clips coming soon, which I'm very excited about just to share exactly why I've been so quiet. In terms of what we're going to be discussing today, I've literally broken down 10 cons that I could think of that's really tripped us up in terms of this moving process and that would potentially trip you up if you were looking to immigrate to WA. But without further ado, let's get straight into the list. So number one is if you are easily disheartened like I am, immigration is so darn hard. Like I'm a very sensitive person. I definitely feel like I'm not the bounce back girl. Like I have a very hard time mourning the end of chapters, friendships, relationships. I am very positive, but I also feel things very, very deeply. So definitely think that leaving friends and family has been exceptionally hard. And there's often like this nagging feeling that I feel and you can't put your finger on it immediately because you don't recognize the feeling. It's not like anger or sadness or anything. It's almost like a melancholy, which is homesickness in various formats, either missing the life that you had, the friends that you had. I think in our case, we had a beautiful circle of friends in Cape Town, which here, I mean, <laughs> my husband and I joke about not yet having any friends here. So it's definitely been a tricky adjustment period. But further than that, just disheartenment in general. I think we are so easy to criticize ourselves in the short term in terms of what we are doing or not doing. And it's so easy to be impatient with the immigration process, but it takes so long for anything to happen, for bureaucratic stuff to happen, for you to feel settled in. There's just so many parts to feeling comfy, cozy in a place. And you have to walk that journey and just trust the bloody process and I know how hard it is. Although we were incredibly lucky having place to stay with um, my brother and sister-in-law, a lot of people wouldn't have that and entering a country that's busy having its worst rental crisis ever was not something we were necessarily prepared for. So it's one thing to read about a rental crisis in the newspaper or online, but we honestly did not recognize how bad the rental crisis in Perth is. And I'm not saying this to fear manga in any which way. It's definitely possible still to find accommodation as evidenced by <laughs> the beautiful place behind me, but it was such a hard slog in terms of, I think we applied for about 10 different properties. We were getting pretty desperate towards the end of our application process. If you struggle with disheartenment, I think just giving yourself that support network as best you can in terms of the Zoom calls with your friends and family back home and your partner, if you're moving with a partner and just making sure that you stay in as positive a mindset as you can, because there's so many setbacks in this process. <laughs> It's most days feel like a comedy of errors, honestly, but you just have to recognize that it's not personal. So number two con of Perth is if you do not enjoy the beach or the great outdoors, 
you're probably not going to like Perth. So you basically need to have a shot for every time someone tells you that Perth is boring, either online or IRL. So it's well known that there isn't much to do in Perth apart from visiting the most extraordinary beaches and forests and going for amazing cycles and incredible runs we were quite well positioned to enjoy that transition because Cape Town although it does have a lot going on a lot of its main features circle around outdoors so trail running on Table Mountain those sorts of things Perth is very similar so it's definitely that very kind of wholesome life if you follow anyone who lives in WA on Instagram you'll see a lot of beaches a lot of picnics um, I've also written down park runs and Pilates. So there's a lot of like specialist gyms that'll do things like reformer Pilates, but then they also sometimes combine spinning. So there's like quite a lot of like niche gyms. In, in Cape Town, you're more likely to go to like just a version active. That was where I was going when I left. Whereas here, you're probably more likely to join like some sort of specialist gym because that is a core thing that people do here. And it feels like a big part of people's identities, which is quite fun. And then every Saturday, you're going to be heading to Bunnings to do something in your garden and like tinkering around with your house. So it's a very wholesome lifestyle typically that people are after when they move to Perth. And if you're not into that and you more prefer like the grungy arts and culture, clubbing scene, like maybe Perth is not the right place for you. Number three, I didn't want to mention, but I have to, I have to. It's that Perth is actually quite car centric. As good as the public transport is, we have found that despite that, we definitely still find ourselves needing a car on the weekends to do said great, doors activi <laughs> great outdoors activity like I've just mentioned. So there's no use. I mean, I'm literally, I can catch so many different buses to work. It's such an easy commute, but it's not really about the commute. It's about being able to enjoy the place where you're living. And unfortunately, a lot of the time that does require a car. The next one is if you love smooth processes. I thought that Australia would be so much more jacked up in terms of bureaucracy and processes, but sadly that is not the case. The current waiting time for Medicare is three to four months. And to add insult to injury, when we applied originally, we emailed our stuff off and we thought that everything was done. We never received any confirmation email. We never received any thank you, nothing. I don't know what was happening with their systems, but when we went into an office in town, they basically said to us like, oh, no, you haven't submitted the correct documentation. Like you needed these supporting documents, which you would just never know because what sort of an applic application process requires you to email an email address and then has no recourse in terms of what you have or haven't filled in or done. So it felt like the timer kind of started again at that point and we still have nothing. We don't have a reference number, we don't have anything. And if you need the doctor or the dentist, in the meantime, you have to get a different number. I had to do it this weekend just to get a pharmacy script. And they tell you that they can claim back um, once you have got your Medicare details, but it doesn't put you, your mind at ease when you need something and you're having to pay out of pocket the whole time. So there's that. And then the other example that I'm going to give is the DOT, which if you're not Australian is the Department of Transport. In theory, you should just be able to show them your South African license and then them give you an Australian license, which is amazing. It's not the case for every country, but for South African licenses it is. And this process, which on the website had said, City West has a 20 minute wait time. I think I was there for like three to four hours and everyone looked incredibly exasperated. So I think definitely allow a lot of time for those sorts of processes and preferably do it before you get your job. Also have to have a sense of humor if you move to Perth. I've noticed that the humor here is incredibly self-deprecating. Like I thought that British humor was dry, but Australian humor is like kind of like, um, dark <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know the right word or like a way of putting it like if you are on reddit at all like a follow i think it's called a thread like the forward slash perth one it's pretty funny like people are very well educated but they are also well educated enough to come up with very compelling narratives around why things do or don't work which is quite fun to, to follow along and to see like what does the average joe feel about like the government and their municipality or um you know i'm not 100 percent sure of the, the terminology that's used here but basically like how do people feel they're very outspoken in terms of like political things like 
people have, seem to hate politicians here. They also hate real estate agents <laughs> and they're very outspoken about these feelings. So if you don't have a sense of humor, I don't really feel like you'll get Australia and maybe Perth. I think also because there's not a lot to do here. People can be a little bit like keyboard, keyboard warrior-ish. Um, but I quite enjoy that, to be honest. If you love clothes shopping, do not move to Perth. Like the options here are so limited. I was telling a friend from South Africa, it's kind of like cotton on, Zara, uh, David Jones, ooh, H&M. I mean, it's just like very vanilla. If you want anything fun, you have to order it from over east and that takes a very long time. I wanted, well, I, I need running shoes, so I was looking online and the selection is pretty minimal. And the way around it, I have been enjoying the thrifting app Depop, which I think I've mentioned previously. That's been amazing. So if you are just hating on the fact that you can't find a lot of the brands that you might want to, um, you can do that. But the verticals that are very good are white goods, as they call them. So that's like appliances, like fridges and washing machines and TVs. You can get that super readily in Perth. And we got a beautiful TV about a week or two ago, like super easy and straightforward. As well as makeup. There are, there's Maker here, there's Sephora here. So it definitely feels like the makeup stuff is covered. But if you want anything specialist in terms of clothes, <laughs> you... Yeah. It's not, it's not Perth. The next one is the extreme weather. We were so arrogant as South Africans feeling like we wouldn't have a tough time adjusting to Perth weather, but even the South Africans who've come from 34 degree weather, you know, Cape Town in December is notoriously hot. But yeah, Jan and Feb here were absolutely excruciating. We absolutely died. We didn't have a car at that point and we were unemployed so we were job hunting on public transport and it was just a dark time in general i mean we really were not having a great time so it's true what everyone says that being said though april may very temperate beautiful time to be in perth it's lovely now just the most amazing weather but do not arrive in jan or feb like we did the next point is around job prospects so to give you some context my role in Cape Town was as an e-commerce content team lead, which given is probably pretty bloody niche and makes me sound very up my own ass. But I was managing four photographers and four writers and was responsible for the output of a content studio. So I was looking for some sort of similar role to that. But because of, you know, the shopping, like I mentioned, not being very great here, um, there's not... I don't know that there's any real e-commerce opportunities in Perth. Uh, most of the opportunities in marketing for what it's worth would be in a media agency, which is where I ended up. But if you're looking for like for like, it can be quite hard to find that. So it's not to say that I don't enjoy my current role. I just, it's definitely more of a deviation than what I was expecting to have to take. And I think that's the case for a lot of people that relocate to Perth is because the industry's which I hear are oil and gas, a lot of like construction and that sort of thing, as well as like nursing and education seems to be like the big industries here. You're maybe gonna have a harder time in terms of finding what you used to do back home, which is not a bad thing. And on top of that, when hiring, it definitely felt like because a lot of it's done through recruitment agencies, people can be quite literal in terms of what they're looking for. So people have a hard time fitting a round peg in a square hole, if that makes sense. So they're less likely to think out the box because they are more kind of risk averse, I guess, than South Africans. Whereas I have found with South Africa, it wasn't any issue to my previous employer, Yuppie Chef. The fact that I hadn't worked in e-commerce, it was more a case of like, do you have transferable skills? Whereas here, it's a bit more literal. And so it can be challenging if there isn't a like for like. The way that I found to get around that is to look into your international certification. So in my case, it would be like getting certified on Meta and Snapchat and TikTok and all the social media platforms that are big here. So that's been kind of an easy solve, but you would need to find the equivalent of that in your industry in order for people to recognize some of your experience. There's also more limited networking opportunities and events definitely not to the degree that I thought that they would be in Perth. It feels like people are more on the lifestyle career path where your job is not your be all and end all, which is also lovely. And I think also 
does um, come up as a factor of an Australian mindset, whereas South Africans are more likely to feel, I guess, defined by their career. The next one is grocery shopping. Until we found Aldi, we were just mortified by the prices of groceries, just in general, and then realized that both Woolworths and Coles have been repeatedly accused of price gouging. And there was a South African um, CEO of Woolworths who had a very controversial interview and rightly so was then, um, I guess, forced to resign and walk away. Um, but yeah, the grocery shopping here isn't, isn't great. I would say that Aldi is your best bet in terms of savings and value for money. And then things like IGA, although they're very nice shopping experiences, they're pretty prohibitively priced I would say so it would be better to do like a weekly shop at Aldi that's what we do and then grab one or two things from Coles or Woolworths or IGA but I definitely wouldn't do the bulk of my shopping there and I know that a lot of people also do do HelloFresh as a result so you can get three five whatever meals delivered to your doorstep and then you only have to bulk up a few meals which is quite convenient that brings us to our final point and this one is a little bit more left field because it's more just about immigration in general, is that you have to, even if you are a humble person, which I would describe myself as a very humble person, I don't brag a lot about my career or my accolades because I feel like people will see your worth based on like working with you and seeing your work ethic and so forth. And it's one thing to say, something about your achievements but it's another thing to just like prove it in the way that you work and the work that you deliver but I will say that it's been pretty humbling the immigration process because even though in my case I have 13 years of experience I've only ever worked in digital marketing you can feel quite small because people will in some instances when you ask about um, the Australian market you will be very grateful for the knowledge that's imparted with you in terms of how things work here but then in other times you just feel very small because you feel like all your experience up until this point has been discredited because it hasn't been in the same country. It's not a bad thing necessarily because I think the ego is so fragile uh, at the best of times that it is good to sometimes challenge that but yeah if you are an egotistical person I don't think that immigration will be a process that you quite enjoy it's been quite hard from that perspective but I think in terms of personal development you kind of take it on the chin yeah your experience isn't as transferable necessarily in every instance as what you would like for it to be so I hope that that even though it's a bit more of an esoteric sort of concept uh, that that landed with you guys and I can't wait to see you in the next video I'm so sorry again that I've been so absent I have so many ideas about what's going to be coming next for the channel I've got honeymoon clips that I need to edit together there's just so much exciting stuff to put forward and package really beautifully so yeah, it's definitely going to be a year of creativity and testing the boundaries of what's possible, especially now that I'm in a new country. There's definitely different opportunities here and different things to film. So if you guys are into that, I can't wait for you to join the fam. Subscribe, like, do your thing. And please let me know in the comments what you thought of today's video. I can't wait to see you in the next one. We might be talking about digital marketing. We may not. As I say, I've been veering off peace recently and it's so darn liberating. I can't wait to see you guys soon. Oh,